Dear students, in the present class we discuss another rationalization of Koyak model, namely the stock adjustment or partial adjustments model. Stock adjustment or partial adjustment model. Partial adjustment model. This is another rationalization of Koyak model. Now, partial adjustment model or a stock adjustment model is familiar to you from your course in microeconomics. A model which you might have studied is the stock adjustment model of Nerlo in the context of demand for consumer durables. Another model which we study is in the context of macroeconomics, the flexible accelerator model of investment. Accelerator model of investment is familiar to you. A variant of this accelerator model is the flexible accelerator model of investment. If you want to study more theoretically about uh, this flexible accelerator model, you read uh, Macroeconomics by Eric Pentecost. Macroeconomics by Eric Pentecost provides a detailed analysis of flexible accelerator model of investments. I will explain what is the difference between simple accelerator and a flexible accelerator. Now, to illustrate the stock adjustment principle, we consider the flexible accelerator model of investments, which assumes that there is an equilibrium, optimal, desired, or longer run amount of capital stock required to produce a given output under a given state of technology, rate of interest, etc. The model says that there is a desired long run equilibrium, expected amount of capital, capital stock needed to produce a given output under a given state of technology, rate of interest, etc. And assuming that the desired stock of capital is desired stock of capital is denoted as Y star T. Y star T as a linear function of output. We write Y star T as equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xt plus ut. Y star t is a linear function of output. We specify Y star t, the desired level of capital stock. Entrepreneurs think it's right to obtain a smooth production process without excess capacity or without overuse of machinery. That is, the accelerator, the Y star T is what is known as the optimum capital stock. Optimum in the sense that there is no excess capital stock. There is also no shortage of capital stock. This capital stock is considered by entrepreneurs as the optimum required to produce any level of output. And in the development economics, 
you know that the warranted growth rate of Harold Domer model is generated by what is known as the acceleration principle that you might have studied in your course in development economics. Anyway, we know that the desired stock of capital is not observable. So, Nerlov postulates a hypothesis known as partial adjustment or stock adjustment hypothesis, which is stated as yt minus yt minus 1 is equal to is equal to delta of y star t minus y t minus 1. y star t minus y t minus 1. Delta is between 0 and 1. This delta is known as the coefficient of stock adjustment. Delta is known as coefficient of stock adjustment. Yt minus 1 minus Yt minus 1 is the actual change in capital stock. So actual change in capital stock is a fraction delta of the desired change. Actual change in capital stock in any time period is a fraction delta of the desired change. Since change in capital stock in any time period is investment, we can write this as it as equal to delta of y star t minus y t minus y t minus y t minus 1 is nothing but k t minus k t minus 1. This is nothing but investment. So we write it as it is equal to delta of y star t minus y t minus 1. And this is the desired change y star t minus y t minus 1. And this is the actual change. The actual change is only a fraction delta of the desired change. A fraction delta of the desired change. So this model says that actual change in capital stock in any time period is only a fraction delta of the desired change in capital stock. If delta is equal to 1, for example, if delta is equal to 1, actual change is equal to desired change. That is whenever, uh, what you say, uh, a discrepancy is observed between actual and desired, the discrepancy will be corrected in the same period. That is, actual change is equal to desired change. And uh, it is known too as that we write uh, the flex, the accelerator model as alpha into yt minus yt minus. This is the form familiar to you. That is, it is, is alpha of delta yt. That means investment is proportional to change in output. So investment, or if we assume that where alpha is known as the acceleration coefficient, acceleration coefficient, it is nothing but delta y by delta k or i by delta y. So it is the acceleration coefficient, delta k by delta y. So that it is equal to delta k is equal to delta k by delta y into delta y is equal to delta k. Okay. <coughs> so, what this model says is, if uh, uh, it is also assumed in the acceleration model that alpha is a constant, and if the economy is in a state of full employment, and if capital output ratio is a constant, entrepreneurs will always increase investments in response to change in change in income or change in output. If uh, they expect, uh, if they want to produce more output and if uh, delta k by delta y is a constant, they have to increase the amount of, the amount of investment. That is what is familiar to you. The model is same, 
but here it is in this model it is assumed that whenever there is a suppose that the value of this alpha is equal to 4 that means 4 units of capital is required to produce 1 unit of output if the owner operators assume that delta y is 1000 then delta k will be 4000 so it is assumed in the simple accelerator model that if entrepreneur suspects an increase in output suddenly without a delay they will be able to increase the capital stock there are no there are no uh, constraints no lack involved but this is an unrealistic assumption anyway before that if delta is equal to 1 then actual change is equal to desired change, adjustment is instantaneous. If delta is equal to zero, then actual change is zero. There is no change in capital stock from one time period to another period. And we assume that typically delta lies between zero and one. Now, <coughs> the reason is that there is a gestation period in all the investment projects. And also, there are administrative and financial problems in all investments, so that, so that actual change is only a fraction of desired change. If uh, there is an in increase in investments, I mean increase in income, increase in the capital stock will not take place immediately. That is, delta will not be equal to 1. <clears throat> the reason is there are delays, gestation periods. If an order is given for a new machinery, it will take some time for the machinery to be produced and installed. Similarly, the decision to order new machinery should be taken at an administrative level. It will take some time. There is, there must be finance, finance to, uh, to finance this purchase so it also causes some delay. So adjustment of K to the desired level take time due to technological, financial and administrative constraints. So the difference between simple acceleration and flexible acceleration is that is in the simple accelerator model it is assumed that Whenever there is a discrepancy between actual and desired, the discrepancy will be immediately corrected. But in the flexible accelerator, it will take some time for this correction to take place. There is always a lag. The lag results from administrative reasons, financial reasons, technological reasons, etc. So the name partial adjustment model. Adjustment is not a adjustment will not fully take place in any time period adjustment is partial now this can be written as yt is equal to y yt is equal to delta y star t plus 1 minus delta yt minus 1 that is yt yt means capital stock at any time period is a weighted average of desired capital at t and capital stock existing at t minus 1. Now substituting for this y star t from this model we write yt as equal to delta beta 0 plus beta 1 xt plus ut plus 1 minus delta yt minus 1 yt minus 1 plus yt minus 1 now c equal to delta beta 0 plus delta beta 1 xt plus 1 minus delta y t minus 1 plus delta u t delta beta 0 plus delta beta 1 x t plus 1 minus delta y t minus 1 plus delta u t 
and this model is known as the partial adjustment model. Now compare this with this. If this is long run or desired demand for capital stock, this is the short run. Our aim is to obtain estimate of beta 0 and beta 1. Our aim is to estimate this long run demand for capital stock. But what we do is we estimate the short run demand for capital stock. You will get the coefficient of as 1 minus delta as we have described in the last class. From this 1 minus delta, you will get delta. Then divide this with delta, you will get beta 1. This divide with this delta beta 0. Drop this term, you will get a long run demand for capital. So we estimate the short run demand for capital. And from the short run demand for capital, we will derive the long run demand for capital as usual. Now, suppose that in the form of a graph, so this is time and this is y star. Suppose that this is the desired stock of capital. Suppose also that this delta is 0.5. Initially, the level of capital stock observed is Y1. The level of capital stock observed is Y1. The desired stock of capital is Y star. If delta is 0.5, whenever a discrepancy is observed in the first period, half of the discrepancy will be eliminated. In the second period, again half of the discrepancy will be eliminated. In the third period, again half will be eliminated. It is like this, until the desired stock of capital will be reached. But the desired stock of capital will not be reached. By the time the discrepancy is eliminated, the desired stock of capital itself will be different. Anyway, the point is, this is an example of a this is an example of what is known as partial adjustment model. This is nothing but a case of flexible accelerator where desired stock of capital is a function of output. In the simple acceleration model, we have a investment is a function of change in output or change in income. Now the question is, as you can see, this model also resembles this model also resembles the coic model where yt is a function of xt and yt minus 1. Now the point is in the coic model there is no theory. It is obtained by purely mathematical manipulation. So it cannot be used unless it is purely mechanical in character. But the question is whether we use this model or this model, whether we use the partial adjustment model or the rational expectations hypothesis. Now, this partial adjustment is useful if, uh, um, sorry, adaptive expectations is due to uncertainties about future income price, interest, etc. As we have studied, adaptive expectation, if there is uncertainty about future income, future interest rates, future price, etc. Future income as in the permanent income hypothesis, future price as in the Pilipskov analysis, future uh, interest as we have studied, demand for money. On the other hand, uh, partial adjustment is suitable if uh, the function is characterized by rigidities, technical, institutional, etc. Now, if uh, you estimate uh, consumption as a function of consumption minus 1 and income, the question is whether this model is generated by partial adjustments 
or adaptive expectations. Remember this, if consumption is forward looking, based on expected income, we can say that we are estimating the adaptive expectations hypothesis. On the other hand, if consumption is characterized by inertia, inertia, we are estimating a partial adjustment model. Economic agents adjust to longer run consumption only slowly. Only slowly. So it is the duty of the model builder to specify whether he is estimating a partial adjustment model or an adaptive expectations model. Let me repeat, if a habit or inertia characterizes the consumption behavior, partial adjustment hypothesis is appropriate. If consumption behavior is forward looking, then permanent income hypothesis, I mean adaptive expectations model is suitable. And it is up to the researcher whether his function is forward looking or characterized by inertia. So these are the two rationalizations of COEC approach to distributed lag model.